If you are wondering when is the best time for yourself to get into Honkai Star Rail, now is the perfect time. With 2.1 being the anniversary patch for Honkai Star Rail, there's a lot of things for newer players to look forward to. For starters, you still have time to claim your free 5 star unit, Dr. Ratio, an imaginary hunt character that does some really solid damage. You also have permanent events that are pretty much story driven, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, there's that, but also it does give you some pretty solid rewards. My personal favorite being the Ethereum Wars event. There's also plenty of quality of life updates that are coming within every patch, including this one. Consistent endgame with more endgame along the way. This also means that you'll be getting more chances of getting yourself some free stuff as well. And with the most important thing for you guys, since you're barely starting out, you also have the anniversary patch, which can give you 20 limited banner pulls via login. And then later on, 1600 jades, which will equate to 10 more limited pulls for yourself. You also have finally the trailblazing will, which essentially is a permanent event that is based on your level progression through the game. You can basically get up to 40 standard pulls for the standard banner and up to 1600 jades, which basically equates to 10 more limited pools. In today's video, I am going to show you guys the game plan as to how to go about your Star Rail journey. The first thing you need to consider is about your four characters. Your four characters should be a DPS, two supports, and a sustain. You can even make the argument that you could probably have like a double sustain if you happen to have a good shielder. However, your DPS should be a character, maybe the one you get for free, Dr. Ratio. However, there's a little bit of a warning I have to tell you. Just like any other DPS, DPS characters need quite a bit of investment in order for them to perform adequately. And right now, we currently have Acheron, who is a lightning type Nihility character. But she's a little bit of a special case because she essentially, instead of following the pure debuffing or following DOT, she is a pretty much pure damage dealer. And this is pretty amazing because both of these characters kind of require a similar type of team. Dr. Ratio, just like Acheron, needs a debuffing team. So we're talking about mainly Nihility characters. Luckily for Acheron, in her banner, you happen to have a potential chance of getting one of the best four star units, a Pela, who is a debuffer and is also an AoE debuffer, which makes it even better. And you also have Gallagher, an abundance character, where after applying the ultimate and having the enhanced basic attack can apply a debuff as well. So there's plenty of characters that can apply debuff, which also includes Preservation MC as well, which is actually really cool. But essentially, you already have a potential chance of getting a pretty solid team with Akron already, just like you would potentially with Ratio. But the biggest difference lies in the playstyle. For Ratio, debuffs will basically mean that he is more likely to utilize his follow-up attack, which is where most of his damage comes from. For Akron, Applying a debuff gives her a stack where when she gets up to 9 stacks, she can use her ultimate, which is where a majority of her damage comes from. And the biggest difference between the two characters is mainly just the fact that the ceiling for these characters are vastly different from each other, along with their bases. Akron has a bonus ability where if you happen to have one or two Nihility characters, you can get a damage boost. So in this case, it's 115% for one or 116% damage boost for two Nihility characters on the team with Acheron, which already makes her base pretty insane, which means you technically can have a little bit less investment with Acheron in comparison to Ratio, and you'll be able to deal a really solid amount of damage and she will perform adequately without needing as much investment, which is really huge, especially for a free to play player. The second thing about Acheron that makes her, in my opinion, better than Ratio is the fact that a lot of the content tends to favor AoE. And with it being AoE, not necessarily erudition, but they like to favor characters that do lots of solid damage to one character and then some. So Acheron is exactly that kind of character. And it is insane what she can do. If I were to recommend anyone anything, it is definitely considered pulling for the Acheron banner. 
I honestly do not think that the Acheron banner is a skip at all. I feel like everyone should consider pulling for Acheron unless A, you don't like her style, or B, you just happen to be super unfortunate with not getting her respected supports that will allow her to perform adequately. So if you don't happen to have those debuffers, if you get super unlucky not getting Pelas, if you just don't have the opportunity to get yourself a Gwenaifen, then that's like the only time I can say, don't get Akron. Otherwise, you should be getting Akron. Your supports are basically just characters that help with giving your team that extra edge. Notably, it could be a speed booster, which allows you to take more turns, like Asta, or it could be someone that's a damage booster, which gives you energy, like Ting Yun. Your sustain basically is simply a character that keeps you alive. So we're talking about healers like Natasha, Lynx, Gallagher will be in this list, who's super solid, and you can have like a shielder like Japard if you happen to get lucky. So what should you prioritize when it comes to building your characters? In my opinion, the first thing you should prioritize is leveling and ascension. Leveling allows you to increase the base stats of attack, defense, and HP. Same thing applies to the Lycoons as well, while ascension will be unlocking those extra talent levels and also those bonus abilities that you happen to see on screen the really big nodes which will allow you to unlock things from the smaller nodes which are permanent upgrades you might as well get as much permanent upgrades as possible as this is where a lot of the character's damage potential or even just their general potential is going to be coming from next prioritization will be your talents which are essentially your permanent character upgrades like i mentioned before Typically, I would say for the lot of the time, basic attack isn't necessarily as important until we get into the conversation of the enhanced basic, which only some characters can do. You have the technique, which is going to be the unique character ability, your skill, which is what you use in the game, the ultimate, which can be used at any time, as long as you happen to have the energy for it, or in Acheron's case, if you happen to have those nine stacks. And then you have those nodes, which are going to be those extra permanent upgrades that you get for your characters and also giving those unique abilities. Then finally, your last prioritization will be your relics. I would say skip on relics until you get to maybe around Trailblaze 60. The reason why you want to wait till like Trailblaze 60 is because you get the guaranteed two gold relics. In my personal experience on the free to play account, those relics that you tend to get from just like your general farming of Echoes of Warm or, you know, your general farming of Sim Uni or even just, you know, chest farming. Those are good enough for your characters. I would also say don't be afraid to rock a two piece, two piece, because those can actually be a lot better in comparison to a full set. And the reason why is because in Star Realm, while your main stat is very important, Having pretty good substats can also be a game changer as well. So having a solid two piece, two piece is totally okay. You don't need a full set. And my last recommendation is going to be farm as much as you need, because you need to keep in mind once you upgrade your trailblaze level, there are certain points where you'll be getting yourself into equilibrium and equilibrium is basically a extra quest that you get in order for you to raise your reward level and raising your world level will also raise the amount of rewards you can get. Now that you have a general idea as to how I go about the game, here's my advice for the road to the end game. First and foremost, make sure you enjoy yourself with the story. That's like the most important thing. Secondly, I would try to avoid to max your trailblaze power. Uh, this is going to be your farming resource. That will allow you to farm pretty much all the things that you need to build your character and this also will be the same thing that will increase your trailblaze level it's probably the main thing that's going to be increasing your trailblaze level other than like side missions or story i would say do your dailies every day and really these are all kind of boiling down to just be consistent like if you're consistent you'll get to where you need to be pretty decently but dailies essentially give you 60 J's per day, and it gives you a massive amount of the Trailblaze experience. Do your assignments every day, as these give you those extra free materials that you need to build characters. And you can also, if you happen to have a Acheron, if you're a lucky winner, 
then you can also get those materials that craft those trick snacks, which are really good for your Acheron. Your Operation Briefing is actually an interesting one. I always recommend doing this no matter what, as again, the free stuff that it's given to you. But it's also like a pretty decent, you know, early game indicator as to how your progression should be on your account. It's really nice. Collect the treasures for more rewards. You can also get uh, free relics this way that can be pretty solid for your team. And I would say definitely utilize the interactive map when you can. Once you unlock your Echoes of Warm, make sure to do them once you unlock them. As the materials that the Echoes of War give, other than like potential light cones, potential purchasing for light cone, free light cones in the uh, Memory of Chaos. But most importantly, it gives you materials that are going to be allowing you to unlock those bonus abilities for your characters. And at a certain level point, uh, you will be needing those materials to maximize your characters. So just keep that in mind. But you can do up to three of them per week. The last thing I would like to recommend is once you get the opportunity to unlock Simulator Universe, I recommend doing that weekly as Simulator Universe gives you a bunch more free stuff that are pretty important for your account building. This includes credits, jades, the standard pool, relic leveling material, and three things that are fairly exclusive to Simulator Universe. That being the Herda Bond for the Herder Storm, the Tracks of Destiny, and there is another way of getting these, but more on that later. And also, the Immersifiers. These are essentially going to be your free redemptions of obtaining potential ropes and orbs which are relics that are exclusive to sim uni for that two piece one thing to know about the herd of bonds is the herd of bonds for the herd of shop which is in sim uni will give you the free to play five star light cones and the super imposes for them you can only get one of these of each but essentially the way i would recommend going about them is as follows if you happen to have a doctor ratio as your DPS character, I recommend going for the Hunt Light Cone. This is actually pretty good for him. Once you get that Light Cone, prioritize superimposing on that Light Cone to get its maximum efficiency. Then, you can focus on a different Light Cone based on your account, based on your characters that you want to build. One fun fact about the Herd of Bonds is by current time of 2.1, you can get up to 18 Herd of Bonds at the moment just by simply clearing the level one of the respective worlds now i know this is a lot of information to take in especially for a new player and this is part of the reason why i didn't include something about battle and gameplay as part of this guide for star rail the other reason why i didn't include it is because there are creators out there that have went about discussing this and have done a phenomenal job at explaining it in detail one of these creators is known as Yumi Tsushinoko, who has made a gameplay guide for Honkai Star Rail, which I recommend everyone to watch if you happen to be interested about expanding your knowledge of how to fight in Honkai Star Rail. Instead, I would like to talk about the store and what you should be prioritizing in buying if you happen to want to do so. For a light spender or a potential well, I would recommend to everyone to get the battle pass. The battle pass is going to be what helps you build your characters a lot easier and your account building to be more efficient. It's a no brainer to always invest in that battle pass. The express supply pass can be a bit of an option if you want to like save up on extra jades simply by logging in, but the most value will definitely come from the battle pass itself. Your jades should only be used on the special passes, which is your limited pools. Your standard pools should be used on the beginner's banner first until you get your free 5 star. Once you get your free 5 star, you can consider going to just a general standard banner unless you happen to have major OCD and just kind of want that beginner's wish to be off your screen. You may have noticed that when you were doing your pools, you happen to get yourself some sort of material. These materials are known as the Undying Starlight and Undying Embers. Undying Starlight is obtained by getting copies of characters and light cones, while the Undying Embers, I believe, is obtained by getting 3-star light cones. Both of these have their own respective shops, but here are my recommendations. For the Undying Starlights, I recommend going for the standard light cones, as they are really solid, especially for the standard characters that you happen to obtain. But also, maybe if you really want to, 
consider maybe using it for limited passes. If you really want a specific five star character or guarantee a five star, go ahead if you really want to. I would still recommend at least getting that consideration of those light cones because they're very solid light cones. But if you really want a specific character and you want to give it a chance, go ahead. Just know that there's some risks. As for Undying Embers with its own store, my recommendation is get the Star Rail passes and special passes first. Then consider getting yourself the Tracks of Destiny. Then, if you really want to, consider maybe getting the talent material so you can ease up a little bit on the farming. The reason why you should consider getting the Tracks of Destiny in the Ember Shop is because not only is it at a discount, but Tracks of Destiny is used for those bonus abilities along with being able to get your characters maxed out in their talent levels. And finally, I will always recommend to any player to save up to at least 10, 20 embers, which is enough for you to obtain both the Tracks of Destiny and also the limited pools. And with that concludes today's video. I hope you guys found this video informative and hopefully this is helpful, especially for the newer players. Again, if there are some things that are missed for you veteran players out there watching this, make sure to mention them in the comments down below. Help out your fellow community members out. And as always, to everyone watching, remember to stay frenzy and peace.